sixth grade, module four, lesson 21, problem set. Number one, compact discs, or CDs, cost $12 each at the Music Emporium. The company charges $4.50 for shipping and handling, regardless of how many compact discs are purchased. A, create a table of values that shows the relationship between the number of compact discs that Mickey buys, D, and the amount of money Mickey spends, C, in dollars. Okay, so if he buys one CD, they each cost $12, and then he's going to have to pay $4.50 for shipping. So it's going to be 12 times he bought one CD plus $4.50. So 12 times 1 is 12 plus 450. That would make this $16.50 for one CD. If he bought two CDs, so 12 times two CDs plus 450, that'd be 24 plus 450, be 2850. And if you bought three, 12 times three CDs plus four dollars and fifty cents. Twelve times three is thirty-six, and thirty-six plus four dollars and fifty cents would be forty dollars and fifty cents. We could put the money dollar sign there. If you know how many CDs Mickey orders, can you determine how much money he spends? Write the corresponding expression. So if we notice here in our expressions, these, the only thing that's changing is what's in the parentheses here. Everything else stays the same. So we're just going to replace that with a variable. And this is representing the number of CDs or the number or D. So we can say that 12 times however many CDs, 12D, plus $4.50 would tell us how much it costs to uh, buy however many CDs and have them shipped that someone would want. Use your expression to determine how much money, how much Mickey spent buying eight CDs. So we would have to do 12 times eight. Let me start that over. $12 each, 12 times he buys eight, plus he has to pay $4.50 to have them shipped. So 12 times 8 is 96 plus $4.50 would be equal to $100.50 for 8 CDs. Number 2, Mr. G's class orders paperback books for a book club. The books cost $2.95 each. Shipping charges are set at $4 regardless of the number of books purchased. Create a table of values that shows the relationship between the number of books that Mr. G's class buys, B, and the amount of money they spend, C, in dollars. So it's $2.95 for every book and then $4 to ship it no matter how many, you buy, how many you buy. So if he buys one book, number of books ordered is one, it would be $2.95 times one plus the $4 to ship it would be $2.95 plus four, or $6.95. If he bought two, $2.95 times two books plus the $4 to ship, let's do $2.95 times two. You get $5.90 plus the $4 would get us $9.90. And then if we had threes, we'd have to do $2.95 times three books plus the $4 to ship. Three times five is 15, carry the one. Three times nine is 27, plus one is 28. Carry the two, three times two is six, plus two is eight. And then our decimal point, there's two digits behind them, so we put it right here. Plus the four dollars to ship would be twelve dollars and eighty-five cents. B 
if you know how many books Mr. G's class ordered, can you determine how much money they spent? Write the corresponding expression. So again, the only thing that's changing is the number of books in our expression. So we can just replace that with B for books and say $2.95 times B or however many books plus $4 to ship is gonna get you any price that you would want or any for any number of books. So use your expression to determine how much Mr. G's class spent buying 24 books. So 2.95 times 24 plus four. Let's start with 295 times 24. Four times nine is 36, plus two is 38. Carry the three. Four times two is eight, plus three is 11. Put our zero down. Let me erase what I carried here. Done with the four, On to the two. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Add them together. We get 7,080, but we need to put our decimal point back in. So there were two digits behind a decimal point in our problem, which means I'm going to move it over two places, so we get $70.80. Then we need to add the $4. And we will get $74.80 for 24 books. Number three. Sarah is saving money to take a trip to Oregon. She received $450 in graduation gifts and saves $120 per week working. She write an expression that shows how much money Sarah has after working W weeks. Okay, so she gets $450 in graduation gifts. So she's not going to get that every week, right? You just graduate, you get your $450, and you're not going to, like, it'd be nice if people gifted you $450 every week, but highly unlikely. So she just gets that $450 once and then she saves $120 per week working. So every week she works, she gets $120. So that's where we can bring in W. So $120 per week, 120 times however many weeks she works, plus she has this $450, that one-time payment of $450. So there's our expression. You can flip it around and say 450 plus 120W. Commuter to property works here. B, create a table that shows the relationship between the amount of money Sarah has, M, and the number of weeks she works, W. So if she works one week, we're going to do 120 times 1 plus 450. So basically 120 plus 450 would be $570. She worked two weeks times two plus 450. 120 times two is 240 plus 450 would be $690. 120 times three plus 450. Let's see, 12 times three is 36. So 120 times three is 360. You don't have to do all this in your head. Actually, I would suggest not would be $810. Now, you can keep going with the um, expression, but I'm just gonna keep adding $120 every time because that's how much she's gonna gain every single week since we've already factored in the $450. So I'm gonna do 810 plus 120, and that would get me $930 after four weeks. And another 120 would be $1,050 after five, plus another 120 would be 1,170, plus another 120. Let's start over here. 
be $1,290 after seven weeks. And then another 120, 1,410 dollars after eight weeks. The trip will cost 1,200 dollars. How many weeks will Sarah have to work to earn enough to go on her trip? So we can just look at our chart here and see where will she be when she has one enough to go on this trip, or 1,200 dollars. So in week six. Here she has 1170 but that's not quite enough. She's going to be $30 short. So she's going to have to work seven weeks to get to 1290 which will get her over that $1,200 mark. So she'll have to work seven weeks in order to raise enough money to go on her trip. Number four, Mr. G's language arts class keeps track of how many words per minute are read aloud by each of the students. They collect this oral reading fluency data each month. Below is the data they collected for one student in the first four months of school. Assume this increase in oral reading fluency continues throughout the rest of the school year. Complete the table to project the reading rate for this student for the rest of the year. Okay, so in September, this person reads 126 words in one minute. Then in October, they read 131, November 136, December 141. So what I'm noticing, what we need, or what we need to notice is a correlation between all of these. So what I'm noticing is every time they're reading five more words per minute. So if we continue that, five more words, 141 plus five would be 146. And we're just going to keep adding five. 151, 156, 161, 166, 171 words. B, if this increase in oral reading fluency contends throughout the rest, continues throughout the rest of the school year, when would this student achieve the goal of reading 165 words per minute? So we want to know when they're going to reach 165 words per minute. So April's 161. May, they finally crossed 165 words. So that would be in May. C, the expression for this student's oral reading fluency is 121 plus 5 times however many months it's been, where M represents the number of months during the school year. Use this expression to determine how many words per minute the student would read after 12 months of instruction. So 121 plus 5 times 12 months. So they've been getting instruction for 12 months. Or 121 plus 5 times 12 is 60. And 121 plus 60 would be 181 words per minute. And number five, when corn seeds germinate, they tend to grow five inches in the first week and then three inches per week for the remainder of the season. The relationship between the height, H, and the number of weeks since germination, W, is shown below. Complete the missing values in the table. So they grow five inches the first week and then for every week after, three inches a week. So after the first week, that's why they only have, they have five, and then they just add three. So here, so 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 3 is 14, plus 3 would be 17, and plus another 3 would be 20. The expression for this height is 2 plus 3w. How tall will the corn plant be after 15 weeks of growth? So 2 plus 3w, or 2 plus 3 if we have 15 weeks. 2 plus 3 times 15 is 45 will get us 47 um, inches after 15 weeks. And number 6. 
The Honeymoon Charter Fishing Boat Company only allows newlywed couples on their sunrise trips. There is a captain, a first mate, and a deckhand manning the boat on these trips. Write an expression that shows the number of people on the boat when there are C couples booked for the trip. So a couple means two people, a honeymoon couple. So if there is also the captain, first mate, and deckhand. So that's three extra people. So there's always two how, times however many couples because there's two people per couple plus the extra three people that need are needed to man the boat. So 2C plus 3. Or you can flip it around and say 3 plus 2C. If the boat can hold a maximum of 20 people, how many couples can go on the sunrise fishing trip? If we have 3 plus 2C needs to be less than or equal to 20 people. That means that 2C must be less than or equal to, if we get rid of this three and we get rid of three here, we only have 17 people that is actually dedicated to the amount of couples. So that means that if we did 17 and we split that in two, we would get eight and a half couples. But can you have eight and a half couples? I mean, you can't have half of a person or a couple because then that's not a couple, right? So really, the maximum they could have would just be eight couples. Which would be 16 passengers. Would fit with the three crew members. If the maximum max capacity is 20 people. And that's the end of lesson 21.